In this video, we're going to introduce metric spaces. So a metric is basically a distance function. So a metric space is a set that has a distance function. Um, let's formally define what a metric is. So a metric on X, so X is a set. So a metric on X, so we're going to define what this means. So this is a real valued function. So is a real valued function. D, which we can call D, I guess D for distance, on the Cartesian product. So it takes an ordered pair and sends it to a real number. Okay, that has the following properties. That has the following properties. Following properties. So if it's not clear, um, again, D takes an ordered pair. So uh, using function notation, it would look like this. D dot dot x cross x. And then it sends that to the set of real numbers. So you can think of it as a function of two variables. Okay. So metric on x is a real valued function d on x cross x that has the following properties. So one. So first of all, um, it's always non-negative, right? Because distance can't be negative. It could be zero, uh, but it can't be negative. So we require that this is true, and this has to be true for all x y in capital X. That's the first. Uh, condition uh, for D to be a metric. Uh, two, if you have that uh, the distance between two points uh, is equal to zero, that should imply that the points are exactly the same. This is equivalent to saying um, that x is equal to y. And this has to be true again for all x, y in capital X. My handwriting is a little bit poor, apologize. Uh, that should be a biconditional arrow there. Three. Um, if you have the distance between x and y, well, that should be the same as the distance between y and x, right? The distance between three and four is the same as the distance between four and three, right? So, and again, this has to be true for all for all x, y, in capital X. Okay, for all. All, all, all points in the space. And four is a very famous one. It's called the triangle inequality. Let me use a different color for emphasis. This is the triangle inequality. Whenever you're proving something is a metric, um, this is always the hardest part, right? Like the, the, the main step is the triangle inequality. The rest of it's always very easy, or usually. So the distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus uh, the distance between y and z. So those are the uh, conditions uh, uh, for a function to be a metric. Let's just look at a, a few brief examples of metrics so you see. Um, so there's a metric uh, that you've known your entire life probably if you, if you know some math. Uh, it's the absolute value, right? The absolute value function. So EX means example. So the most common one would be, uh, we'll, we'll set capital X to be the set of real numbers. And we'll set D of X, Y. We'll define that to be the absolute value of X minus Y. Okay. So this is a function. It takes an ordered pair. So D maps R cross R into R. Right, so it's a function defined on a Cartesian product. Right, take it's a function. It's a multivariable function. Right, it takes takes two, it takes a pair, and sends it to a real number. So this is a metric on R. So D is a metric on the set of real numbers. I believe I have a proof in my. Uh, I think it's in my advanced calculus playlist where I prove the triangle inequality for D. So. After you have that proof, um, the rest of it uh, is trivial. Let's look at another example. Um, instead, let's say uh, we let capital X be the set of all n tuples. So Rn. So Rn is the set of all n tuples. What does this look like? 
this is the set of, uh, I guess, all n tuples. So x1, comma, dot, 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 uh, x sub n, such that uh, x sub i is a real number, and that's for each i, so for i uh, from 1 uh, to n. So it's all the all the n tuples. So in the Cartesian plane, it would be all the x and y pairs. Um, and then in uh, like a count three class, it'd be r cubed. That'd be x, y, z. Here we have r, n. So we're in uh, n dimensional uh, space. So what would the metric be here, right? So you would take you would take two n tuples. So you would take x equals uh, say x one dot 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 uh, to x n. Then you would take y equal to uh, y1 dot 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 uh, y sub n. Okay, so you have two n tuples in Rn. Okay, so n dimensional space. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then you would define uh, the metric as follows. So little d, you, so you have an ordered pair of n tuples. Pretty ridiculous. And um, I'm going to use a, a, a square root here. So I'm going to define this carefully. So it's a very, very, very big square root. And so we just basically subtract. So we do x1 minus y1 squared plus dot, 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 plus, beautiful stuff, x sub n uh, minus y sub n squared. This is known as the Euclidean metric. Okay, Euclidean. Uh, sometimes people call it that. It's the u. Euclidean metric, and that's, I'm assuming, that's named after Euclid, right, which was a famous uh, math person. So a very, very uh, important metric space. Here's another one, a little bit more advanced. Um, I wasn't going to do this one, but just uh, why not, right? It's, it's, it's not hold back. Um, so another one uh, is you can let uh, S be a set. So S is a set. And we'll let capital X, we'll let that be B of S, big B of S. And this is going to be the set, okay, this is going to be the set of all bounded, bounded real valued functions. So bounded real valued functions on S. Remember, a function is bounded if it's less than or equal to some number uh, for all S. So for example, um, so if F uh, is in this set, okay, then that implies that F uh, maps S, S is the domain, R is the codomain, and F is bounded, so that would mean that the absolute value of F of S, right, is less than or equal to M for all S and S, and for some, I'll just say positive M, right? If it's zero, we can just make it positive. So that's what it means for a function to be bounded. So this is the set of all the bounded functions, every single one. So we want to define a metric, right, on this set. So we're no longer looking at numbers or ordered pairs. We're looking at functions, right? So we're trying to measure the distance between two actual functions. So we'll define d. Uh, it takes an ordered pair of functions, f comma g, right, f comma g, and it's going to be equal to the supremum. I say, what is that? I'll explain it in a second. Um, and then you take the absolute value of f of s. I'm going to use a cursive s. Let's have fun with that. Uh, g of s dot dot and then little s is in capital S. So the supremum uh, is the least upper bound, right? It's the smallest uh, upper bound. So um, we don't know that these functions have a maximum. Otherwise, I would use maximum here. So um, typically, when you don't know if the functions have a maximum, you use supremum. If these functions were continuous and S was like a closed set, then we would know the maximum exists, but we don't, so we can just take the supremum. So it's the least upper bound. You can think of it as uh, kind of a maximum, but it's a little bit more general because um, a maximum might not exist. If you don't know what supremum is, think about this. Uh, if you take the maximum of the numbers, uh, of all the numbers in 0, 1, right, you get 1. But if you take the maximum of, say, the set uh, 0, 1, then it put a parenthesis here, it does not exist. There is no maximum. But what you can do is you can take the supremum of that set, right? So the supremum of the set is 1. It's the smallest upper bound. So it allows you to get a number uh, where the maximum um, does not. Same thing here, except we have functions. Anyways, this is a metric on the set of all bounded uh, functions. Let's look at another one. Let's keep going. Why not? No reason to, to stop. 
Um, let's say um, we have uh, a set. So x is any set. So x is a set. And we're going to define the following metric on x. So d of x, y. It's going to be equal um, to the following piecewise function. So it'll be 1 um, if x is not equal to y. And it will be 0 um, if x is equal to y. Okay, it'll be 0 if x is equal to y. Um, this is called the discrete metric. This is called the discrete metric. Um, I actually have a video um, on, on showing that this is a metric. I think it's, uh, as I'm making this video, it's currently the only video I have on metric spaces. It's, it's a proof um, that this is actually a, a metric. Um, it's, it's a bit of work. It's kind of hard. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to show this as a metric, uh, just just Google it, uh, type it into YouTube, and it should be it should show up. Or just look at my channel. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of a tough proof. Um, so I think that's good. These are the main uh, metric spaces. So what you should get from this video is that a metric is a distance function defined on a set. Uh, a metric space, okay, a metric space. Probably should have told you that is a pair, right? Is a pair uh, x comma d, right? So it's just a, a set with a metric. That's all a metric space is. Probably should have uh, emphasized that at the beginning of the video, not 11 minutes into it. Um, and that's it. I hope this video has made some sense, uh, even just a little bit. And uh, that's it.